Hello, I'm Stuart Appleby and you're watching Leicester Square TV. Ice Age is back with a bang. It's another adventure for the gang. And here at the gala screening of Ice Age Continental Drift, we caught up with the stars on the red carpet. Leicester Square TV. Hi, Michael. Hi, Steve. Hi. Nice to meet you both. Yeah, good, thanks. Um, this film, um, tell me, talk to me about the progression of it, because it's, it's along in the sequel now. How has this changed, this film, from, from the others that have gone before in the sequel? Now? Well, you know, as Mike and I started this film and we read the script for the first time, <clears throat> it's a big story. It's an epic event happening within the world. And so as filmmakers, we were thinking, we need to take this franchise to a new place. Each time we make a film, we want it to be unique, fun, bigger and better. And so we made this film a stereo experience, I think, that is better than anything we've done in the past at Blue Sky. And we tried to create a big, you know, a big film in scope. Lots of fun action, but always with that Ice Age comedy running through the middle of it. And the character progression as well. How difficult is that to keep progressing the character and keep coming up with new ideas as well? Well, there's such a great dynamic with Manny San Diego, with Ray, John, and Dennis, that it's just sort of a dynamic that you love watching. So the real challenge then is how do you take those three characters that you love and put them in a new situation that's interesting to watch? And I think out of the last uh, couple sequels, that's been the thing. They fought dinosaurs in the last movie. That's a really outrageous thing. And on this movie, we thought, you know, let's let's put them in a big sea adventure and see how they would respond to that. So I think that's been the uh, the catalyst for this one. And as directors, both of you, uh, where do you get your satisfaction from? Is it from the audience, from their reaction? Is it from the critics or reviews? Where does it come from? It's probably not from the critics. It's the audience. It's, it's the, the audience. audience. Mike and I have had a chance to watch the film. Uh, with a test audience and and along the way we show it to our crew and even some of our family and that's where you realize that's that's what we're making the movie for you know when we see a family come in and they sit down with their popcorn and their kids and we can see kids having a laugh parents enjoying it you know that's the most satisfying part of the process for us yeah I love I love showing the movie at home to my daughters who are five and six and if they're laughing at something I feel like I did my job okay, cheers guys thank you thank cheers you. thank you Hi. I don't know if you remember I met you at your book signing in February oh, I interviewed you there um, yes, 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 so, yes. How, so how are things going uh, with the book really as well, well yeah oh the book's been great um, but for a lot of different for a lot of different reasons I mean mainly because I wanted to really get in the minds of or not get in the minds I wanted to kind of um, help and, and challenge and inspire the the current athletes, and I've had some wonderful feedback from the guys who are under one of the most physical um, challenges, the, you know, the greatest show on earth, the Olympic Games, and some of the guys getting ready for that have come back and said, really found it useful, and um, that's been the biggest compliment of all. Uh, and you would have probably seen the result this morning, the 100 metre result, um, does that just not whet your appetite really for the Games? <laughs> yeah, big time, I've watched it already, um, Johan Blake won in an absolute storm, 9.75 seconds, New, you know, personal record, all that sort of stuff. But uh, let's not forget, he's world champion. And uh, Usain Bolt was, was, running, was running to second place and full started last year in the world championships. And it was because of Johan Blake. People ignore this. Blake was in form last year and Bolt knew he needed to get out quick. And that's why he full started last year. I've no doubt about that. He knows him well. They train together. So Johan Blake's gone to the top of the pile in terms of one of or certainly co-favourite alongside uh, Usain Bolt but yeah the Jamaicans are so strong certainly favourites of the relay and, uh, Do you think Johan's got a chance against Usain? Absolutely I mean he, he beat him last night by the country mile in 100 metre terms you know there was a lot of daylight between Johan Blake and Usain Bolt so you know can he beat him well yeah he did last night and can he do an Olympic final? That's a bigger question because um, Bolt knows how to handle it. But let's not forget, Johan Blake is world champion from just last year. So, it, yeah, it's a it's a tantalising uh, proposition in, in the hundred metres and and way beyond. I mean, there's so many events that are teeing up to be incredible. And, and just finally, Steve, the makeup of Team GB is almost complete. Most people have been selected now. How do you think we're fair? I think we'll do really well. I really do. I think the um, the home advantage will, will will kick in. I think you know it just it just makes that little bit of difference when you know the margins are tiny at Olympic level, and if it if it just makes somebody have a little bit more intensity, a little bit more passion and desire, it can turn fourths into thirds, silvers into golds, and and people who might not have just made finals into you know and. 
that, that is all that makes the big difference. 19 gold medals last time, 47 medals in total. We can certainly go 20 plus gold, and I think 50 plus in total um, is, a, is a great target and one I think we're, we, we, we should get really. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Steve. Nice to see you again. Enjoy your morning. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, and you are Ice Age fans, household? Absolutely, absolutely. I was just saying actually earlier that I actually am like Sid, aren't I? Because I think I've got the adult version of ADHD. So, you know, I'm a bit like hyper like that and I'm always on the go. So I do, he does remind me of me. What do you think? Do you think I look like Yeah, Sid? I think that's possibly a good comparison. I would like to say. I would like to say. But what, what's new for you at the moment? What have you been up to? Uh, we just got back from Florida, actually. So we got back... Um, Yesterday, so we've been in Florida, had a fantastic time, apart from the hurricane, which was called Debbie. Yeah. Can you believe that? Hurricane oh, Debbie? Well, that's a stroke of unfortunate luck. That is weird, isn't it? Really weird. But, didn't, you know, it really didn't ruin the time at all. We had the most fantastic time, and, oh, sorry, and uh, just carried on through the hurricane, really. So, and filming starts again the 16th of July, so... So you're busy, then? <laughs> I'm always busy, yeah. My life's rush, 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 but that's the way I like it, so... OK, great. Well, nice to speak to you, Debbie. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. 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 So you're here with your family today, very much a family occasion? Yeah, I am. I'm here with my cousin, two little girls, uh, and one of my friends. So it's more for me, though, not for them. I actually I love animation films. So. So, uh, and what's new for you at the moment? Obviously, you're doing a, a, a lot of work, but have you got anything in the pipeline coming up? Um, we've got the second, uh, this one, six series coming up. We'll start filming the 16th of July, so that's it, really. Just waiting for that. So I'm just literally kicking back in a minute and just sort of taking it easy until things get really hectic. Uh, and you're busy abroad as well, in Dubai? Uh, well, Dubai was more of a holiday, but um, we obviously got invited by um, the princesses of Dubai for afternoon tea, which was an absolute honour. So it's really good. And when you look at the show, have you been blown away by the success of it? Yeah, I think... It's like, before I was on the show, I obviously got told that it's going to be an overnight thing, it's going to be huge, way, 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 change your life. I never really thought, you know, I never took too much notice of it. But since I'm on the show, yeah, it's, it's something else. Literally, they say we get something like 1.4 million viewers, which is done by little black boxes of people's houses, but literally everywhere we go, we get recognised. So, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's good. It's been amazing. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I'm so, is this very much a family occasion for you this morning? Is it? Well, my kids didn't sleep much, oh. um, and to be honest, I'm just much a fan myself because I absolutely love it. And uh, I've heard about the Sid Shuffle, which I'm a bit worried about. Being dancer myself with ice skating, I should be quite good at it, but I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Uh, uh, and nowadays, uh, what, what are you up to? Can you tell us a bit about what you're doing nowadays, Gary? Uh, still involved in rugby at high level, a bit of coaching, a uh, bit of speaking, and a bit of ice skating, believe it or not, doing stuff with the, just toured with Dancing and Ice, the, the live tour, which was great. Got my own show in Blackpool coming up. So, yeah, I'm a busy guy. I speak to a lot of ex-sportsmen. Yeah. Um, when they finish playing, um, they miss that buzz. Uh, do, do you miss that buzz of getting on the pitch? Well, it's replicated that buzz for me when I get on the ice rink and I do shows, so that's that's where, I'm, where I sort of replace it. Uh, and you mentioned you're doing coaching as well. Do you a bit of coaching, Danny Kerr at... Uh, uh, Harlequins, who's a, who's a, a great little rugby player playing for England, I'm coaching him, a bit of Harlequins, and I've got my own kids that I coach as well, so yeah, I'm quite busy. And just finally, you, do you enjoy teaching younger guys as well? Yeah, there is a bit of a buzz of actually coaching young kids and, and, and watching them learn, which is fantastic, so um, the more I can do that, the, you know, the, the hopefully the, the better they'll get. Okay, cheers. Thank you, Gary. Cheers. Thank you. Great. Um, I stage four, if you tell me a little bit about, because you've been involved, haven't you, in it kind of indirect almost. Yeah, right? you know, I stage four has a dance move, a dance routine called the Sid yeah. Shuffle, and um, 20th Century Fox asked me to come along and get involved, and I brought my kids from the Kevin Lund Performing Arts Academy, and we all went down to um, Tower Bridge and filmed the promo, which was filmed all over the world, and came together, and it makes one big routine. They've been showing it before the premiere just now, and my Performing Arts Academy have been performing it, so it's been absolutely amazing, so we're really, really Involved. How, good, how good is that for the youngsters as well to get on screen and to get their dancing showcase? I think it's so nice. You know, when you start, I started performing arts academy because I wanted to give opportunity, and then for them to see themselves on a viral campaign and show their friends, it is. It's so amazing. It's really inspiring. I think you, with children now, they need positive role models, and I think for them to actually get involved and do it, I think it gives.
gives himself a, their, their own personal personal model role model. Yeah. And would you encourage young people to get involved in, in dance? Because perhaps, from a boy's perspective, it might not be something you look at uh, from a young age. You might be interested in other kind of sport. But how do you influence someone to, to get into that kind of field? Do you think? I, I think everyone dances. You put a song on, everyone dances. But it's normally boys that say, "I can't dance," but they do dance. And I think that because I run my own academy, they see that I'm there and I'm a boy and I dance and I enjoy it. So they, we've got so many boys. Are, I'm so lucky, and they all have a great time. They're up there dancing right now, and they. It, they're, they're enjoying it. It's just that you need exercise. We need exercise. We're so sedentary. We've got so many computer games. We've got so many things going on where we don't actually get up and get active. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Great, Kevin. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And cheers. cheers. Have, a good TV. have a good one. So the celebrities have been out in force here at the gala screening of Ice Age Continental Drift. This has been Stuart Appleby for Leicester Square TV. For now, see you next time.